this video, we're going to be demonstrating how to train a Keras model. There are a few prerequisites that you need to complete before moving forward with this video. So one is that you need to have Keras installed and all of the other prerequisites and dependencies for Keras as well. These can be found in my Keras prerequisites video. Additionally, as you can see on my screen, we have this model built here already. We did that in my last video on building a single hidden layer model in Keras, so be sure to check that out as well. And lastly, you need to have watched my video on pre-processing data for training because we're going to be using that data in this video to show how to train the model. All right, so assuming that you are up to date on all the prerequisites and have watched those videos, let's go ahead and get started on writing the code that we need to train our model. So just to refresh our memory, recall that we have our model here that we built in a previous video with the three dense layers. And now we're going to use the data that we generated for training, which was the medical trial for an experimental drug data. We're going to use that to train this model on. The first thing we need to do is we need to call Keras compile function on our model. So we do model.compile. And now this is going to expect a number of arguments. The first is going to be the optimizer. So in my case, I'm going to use Atom, and that takes in an optional parameter, LR, for learning rate, that I'm going to set to 0.0001. Now, this optimizer is the optimization function that you want your model to use. So you could use SGD, which is Stochastic Gradient Descent, or RMS Prop, or there are several other optimization functions, but I am choosing to use the Atom optimization function here. All right, and then the next argument that we are going to specify is loss. And I'm going to specify the sparse categorical cross entropy loss function. So the loss function is going to specify how the loss is calculated for your model during training. So as you can see here, like I said, I'm using sparse categorical entropy, but you could also use mean squared error, or mean absolute er error, or several others are available for you to use. The last argument that we're going to specify is metrics. And we are going to set that to an array that contains the string accuracy. Now this metrics array is just an array of metrics that you'd like to use to judge the performance of your model. So I'm using accuracy here. There are several other type of metrics that Keras has documented that we can use as well. And like I said in my previous video about the machine learning terminology here, if you are unsure about what an optimization function is or what the loss function is doing, why we need these metrics, etc., these are all things that are general to the machine learning field. And we're just going through in this playlist and talking about the technical implementation of building models and training them in Keras. But I am going to produce a, another playlist that is going to touch on just machine learning topics in general. So if you're struggling with any of the concepts that I'm throwing out or using, then just let me know in the comments below so that I can better tailor my playlist in the future to be able to address these types of questions. All right, so now we have everything we need in order to compile our model, so let's just go ahead and run that. And we got an error here, unexpected keyword argument passed to optimizer. Okay, so the problem here is that I accidentally left off a closed parentheses when specifying my learning rate for my optimizer function, so let's rerun that. And now we have just one too many parentheses on the outside here. So let's run that again. Okay, so just a couple of typos here. So we're past that. Now the final step after compiling the model is to actually train the model, and that's going to be used with the fit function that we are going to call on our model. So the first item that we're going to pass in is our training samples. Now recall, we have from our pre-processing data Keras video, we have this scaled train samples variable that we use to store all of our scaled training data in. So we're going to use this as our samples in our fit function. Scroll back down here, paste that in. And next, it's expecting the labels for these samples. So if we scroll back up again to see what did we call our labels, we just simply called those train labels. And these were the zeros and ones for the trues and falses, whether or not our patients had a reaction to the experimental drug. So we pass in our training labels. Next, we specify our batch size. 
and this is going to be how many samples we want our model to group together at a time when training. So rather than looking at each individual sample one by one, we want our model to analyze our samples in batches. And I'm just going to arbitrarily choose a batch size of 10. So our entire sample size is 2100, so a batch size of 10 just seems reasonable. Next we specify our epochs. I'm going to specify 20 here. A single epoch is a single run through the data, so how many training runs do we want? We're going to say 20 here. Next, we're going to specify shuffle equals true. Now, shuffle equals true is the default for the fit function, so if you don't specify it, then it's going to be set to true anyways. I'm just pointing it out here because I think it's important that you understand that the data that your model is iterating on over and over and over again, each run, each epoch, it's going to be in a different order because of this shuffle equals true. Now if you had shuffle equals false then it would be in the same order with each pass through the data. And like I said this is by default so you don't even have to specify it. I just wanted to point it out because I think it is an important parameter for you to understand. And lastly I'm going to specify verbose equals two. And this is just in regards to whenever we run this function it's going to be printing out output for each run through the data and so there's different levels of verbosity depending on how much you'd like to see or not like to see. So I'm specifying two here. You can check out Kara's documentation to understand what the different levels are to see what type of verbosity suits your needs. All right, so now we've got everything specified that we need for the fit function. So let's go ahead and run this, and this is actually going to be training our data. And I'm just going to scroll down here because we're going to have some output that we are going to want to look at to see how our data was trained. All right, and now let's run this. Okay, so we get some output from all 20 of our epochs. So we see that we start out on the first run through the data, we have a loss of point, almost 0.69 and an accuracy of, of only about 46%, so not too good. We go to the next epoch, we see that our loss has decreased a little bit and our accuracy has increased to 57%. And as we keep going down, if you just look at the accuracy first, we see that we are seeing a steady climb all the way to our 20th epoch. We are at almost 93%. Same thing goes for the loss as well. We see that we start at 0.68 and it's just steadily decreasing all the way down until we get to 0.27. This is a very simple model on some generated data and we see that it is able to learn from it and actually fit to the data up to with 93% accuracy just over 20 epochs. Now if we were to tweak our model a bit and make it a bit more complex or maybe even just train it for longer by adding more epochs, it could possibly start getting even more accurate and having less loss. Now in our subsequent videos I'm going to be demonstrating some more complex models and some training techniques in terms of what types of parameters you can tweak for what types of problems. We'll get into convolutional nets, but I hope that for now that you are encouraged with how simple it is to just get started with Keras and to use their API and really easily train models. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. And thanks for watching.